。OK， 唔緊要。我哋時間夠啦。This time to start the meeting,、uh, we have the deputy chairman with us now, and、uh, please invite the officials, our guests, to join us. Ingrid. Welcome, Secretary. And Ingrid, are you not on transport? Ha ha ha. Congratulations, Permanent Secretary. All right, and now call the meeting to order. Since we have formal quorum, welcome, Secretary. Welcome, Director Vaudet. This is a public hearing of a PAC Report、uh, Number Seventy, Chapter Three. Let's begin, Secretary for Education. Sorry,、uh, Director Vaudet. Uh, is going to give an introduction to Chapter Three, and then、uh, the secretary will speak. So, director, thank you for inviting me to give a brief introduction to the、uh, PAC report、uh, number seventy,、uh, Chapter Three, on、uh, integrated education. There are four parts in this、uh, report. The first one, introduction. On the、uh, background of the、uh, audit that we have conducted, according to the Disability Discrimination Ordinance、uh, and also the Code on、uh, Code of Practice on Education issued by the EOC, all educational uh, uh, institutions have to provide equal opportunities to all the students, el eligible students, especially、uh, students with、uh, special educational needs.、Uh, that is those with learning difficulties or adaptation difficulties. In the past five years, in the public sector schools, there has been a significant rise in、uh, SANS students、uh, to the tune of 37 percent, and they concentrate in four areas:、uh, special learning difficulties,、uh, ADHD, autism, and、uh, Uh, lang speech and language impairment. In 2016-17 school years,、uh, all, all of the、uh, 484, 444 public sector or ordinary schools, including 454 primary schools and 3390 secondary schools, about 43,000 students are in attendance. Uh, or 7.8 percent of the student population through the cash grant and additional resources for on teaching staff as well as professional support and teacher training.、Uh, these schools are given、uh, support to take care of SANS students, and the expenditure has increased from、uh, $1 billion in 2012-13 school year to the $1.4 billion in 2016-17 school year, a rise of 40 percent. The second part of the report uh, is uh, on the identification of、uh, the enrollment of SANS students uh, and the work done by the、uh, Education Bureau.、Uh, as far back in the、uh, 1980s,、uh, the Education Bureau have been、uh, providing the early、um, identification of and also counselling of us.、Uh, P1 students with learning difficulties, and also through observations and identification and assessment by school teachers, as well as、uh, the assessment of uh, educational uh, psychologists.、Uh, Follow-up action uh, were arranged、uh, for their for their needs. According to our study, the, in 2016-17, 6,131 students were assessed by school.、Uh, Uh, by educational psychologists、uh, who are, who work on a school base、um, school base、uh, approach, of、uh, which four hundred four thousand one hundred eighty one or sixty eight percent were uh, uh, identified uh, at P one and P two. The remaining one thousand nine hundred fifty or thirty two percent 
were only assessed to be sent students uh, or in the senior fo forms. Early identification of a student with learning difficulties can uh, enable parents to understand the schools and also the needs in in support, so, so that uh, timely uh, referral can, and uh, support can be provided by schools and uh, parents. Therefore, we urge the Education Bureau to encourage uh, parents uh, to let schools uh, refer their children for early assessment and also to set up uh, training of uh, teachers uh, in the teaching science students and also uh, more to, uh, information on schools that uh, would provide uh, support to science students should be uh, released. The part, part three talks about how the government manages uh, the uh, ordinary schools in the public sector and also these uh, policies in support of integrated education. Uh, since uh, 1983, a number of uh, enhanced uh, counseling services has been provided to the low, uh, academically the underachievers in schools including the provision of uh, one to three additional st uh, teachers, uh, depending on the number of uh, students in the school, and to ex expand the support uh, on integrated uh, education starting from 2003-2004. A study grant, support grant was also given to schools. So but sc and schools can uh, flexibly uh, deploy it, um, and use these uh, allowance and grants uh, given to support um, Academically uh, less capable students and also sense students, but there's a cap to the uh, grant uh, given. In 2016-17, uh, the grant was capped at 1.58 million dollars. However, we find out that uh, although the number of um, students is the basis for calculating the grant, but uh, but it's not uh, the basis of calculating the cap. As a result, uh, the the steep rise of uh, students um, did not lead to the increase of grant in some schools. In 2013-14, uh, there were four schools uh, which had uh, reached the uh, received the maximum grant, uh, and in 2016-17, uh, there were 56 such schools. On the other hand, we found that in 2015-2016, 366 schools uh, have a sur surplus uh, after spending the money. Uh, on the uh, on on science students, and uh, 122 uh, registered a surplus of 10 percent uh, in respect of the annual grant. After the the launching of this um, studies grant scheme, the, the the Education Bureau has been uh, encouraging participating schools to switch to another mode and and re and receive. Uh, a study support grant so that flexible uh, resource can be deployed flexibly, and so and that uh, the school can employ uh, teaching staff and other professional and uh, and higher professional services so that to um, take care of students' needs uh, which may be changing uh, over the years. As at the 2016-17, uh, 454 uh, public sector schools, out of which uh, 140 have now switched to the uh, to the new system of uh, s learning support uh, grant. Uh, from 2017-18 to 2019-20, uh, the uh, one additional teaching post uh, was uh, deployed to every uh, ordinary. Uh, primary and uh, secondary school in the public sector, and also there's a, de a dedicated school so which would act as a coordinating the teacher. According to the Education Bureau, the, the coordinating of uh, teacher should uh, should have a certain uh, should have completed the three uh, tiers of training in taking care of science students. But as at the end, as at January 2018, out of the 20, 444 Teachers, 56 or 23 percent have not uh, completed the three tier of education, and uh, so far, three cycles uh, have been completed. In 20, sub following the introduction of the uh, professional teacher uh, teacher development framework in 2007-08. And there's a, t a target on the training in each cycle. According to the uh, 
situation at the end of 2016-17 school years. Out of the 844 public sector ordinary schools uh, which have uh, completed the second and the third cycle of training, many have failed to reach the uh, target object objective objectives and the levels required. The 11 have not uh, reached any training target in the second and third uh, cycle in respect of all three tiers of uh, training programs. The school-based uh, educational psychological service is, uh, is a comprehensive uh, psycholog psychological service provided to ordinary uh, primary and secondary schools in order to help the school cater to the needs of uh, different students of different school as educational needs and also to identify uh, students at risk and uh, to provide support to send students. When we examine the uh, work of the uh, educational uh, psychologists in 2016-17, we found that uh, 42 have fewer visit days than required in respect of uh, those schools' uh, needs. We propose that uh, the, gov the education bureau should set up a target for the three-tier training and also to take effective measures to make sure that the visit days of uh, educational psychology will meet the requirements. Our views and recommendations have been agreed to by the Education Bureau. I would like to thank these uh, colleagues uh, in the Education Bureau to, for their cooperation during the uh, audit and also for their very effective uh, assistance and response. Thank you. All right. Uh, this is uh, Chapter 3, Report Number 70 from the Director of Audit. Secretary for Education, you have uh, an opening speech. I would like to thank the uh, Director of Audit for the for report number 78 uh, on uh, integrated education and the recommendations made after their study. We accept the recommendations and would uh, implement those uh, uh, progressively so that so as to enhance uh, the support to send students and to provide appropriate uh, in education services to them. So we have taken we have uh, launched a number of improvement measures recently to to improve the support for SANS students, uh, including the uh, enhanced uh, speech therapy uh, allowance, which we has been we have uh, regularized, and to increase the uh, grant and the cap of uh, study support grant, expand the school-based uh, educational psychological service to all public sector schools, and uh, in in three years we would uh, extend uh, in three years time every public sector school will get one additional teaching post so as to coordinate the work on, uh, on providing service to STEM students and the, the coverage of the grant will be extended to the mentally uh, ill students as, so that the schools will be given additional resources to take care of them. We also take a, a number of measures to review the integration, the work on integrated education and also to improve the uh, practicability of uh, educational measures. Our measures cover a number or a number of measures including the re 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 reorganization of the different grants and schemes for integrated education and to make sure that the teaching team the team of teachers is stabilized and more flexible the deployment resources will be allowed so as to support send students we support the uh, the uh, third tier of support uh, under the uh, basic uh, grant uh, model so that uh, more students with more uh, send students identified or, or which are or schools facing more difficulties will get more appropriate uh, and enhanced support and we in, in continue to improve uh, school based uh, educational psychological service. We have reported uh, the uh, measures to the education peer, peer, uh, panel in March. Uh, in, in, in summary, we will continue to follow up the recommendations and listen to views on various uh, stakeholders and to cooperate with different sectors to do a better job in sending students and the service provided to them. Well, we are happy to take questions. Thank you. All right. Um, we can now allow members to put questions to the administration. Uh, would you please uh, tell us which paragraph you would like to uh, talk about? Uh, if you just uh, look at the term integrated education, we don't uh, exactly know uh, what it's about. Perhaps uh, the secretary can tell us under the different uh, categories of uh, SANS students. So there are, uh, I believe, nine 
students with some learning difficulties, uh, including the uh, latest one, which is a student with mental illness. Can you give a brief account of uh, what what they what, what they are? So, Miss Chen, are you to uh, want and some elaboration on uh, the uh, meaning of uh, a particular type of uh, sense to, for example, with uh, those with hearing impairment and what uh, they are or who they are. Uh, yes, because uh, not many people are, are knowledgeable about these uh, issues. So perhaps I, uh, uh, perhaps I can defer to my expert colleagues, Mr. Lai. Uh, Mr. Lai, we have special education and integration education uh, being carried out in p parallel with a severe uh, handicap or multiple handicaps. Uh, the students will be accommodated in special schools with the consent of uh, parents. As for the other ASEAN students, they will be uh, admitted to ordinary schools under the integrated education approach. Uh, we have uh, nine types, nine types of uh, SEN uh, students, and the first type is what we call student with specific learning difficulties. Uh, some sometimes uh, generally referred to as uh, people suffering from dyslexia. They have reading and writing uh, difficulties in using their mother tongue Chinese. They will get the the word uh, reverse uh, written in the reverse of form, and they have difficulties in reading Chinese. Second, uh, we are talking about uh, mental intellectual disability. We have forty one special schools for the intellectual dis student with disability disability, but there are students. Who can be admitted to ordinary schools under the integrated education? And we will talk about uh, IQ below seventy. And we have a student with uh, autism, which means they have a uh, intellectual disability or the, um, or, or learning. Problems, and we have also got ADHD students. That they have uh, problems with uh, attention, uh, maintenance, and also the self-control. They may be more impulsive than uh, other students, and uh, there are other with a uh, physical disability. They have uh, uh, movement problems as well. As well. Etc. And also, we have uh, different uh, types of visually impaired students. If uh, this the condition is serious, uh, the student would uh, attend a special um, school. But if uh, it's just a, a, a slight uh, visual impairment or the difficulty in seeing things, they can be admitted to ordinary schools. As only also for. Here, students with hearing the impairment of a mild or moderate uh, degrees that they can be admitted to ordinary schools. And in the past, we also uh, offered help to the student with mental illness. And this time, uh, uh, we uh, put this uh, type of student under the uh, in uh, SEN program in ordinary. Schools. Thank you. I I understand that back in uh, or prior to two thousand and two, SEN students covered a bigger uh, a, a number or more students, more types of students, including gifted students, and also those with uh, emotional issues. There is another unit under the Education Bureau for gifted children, and that will be separated 
children with emotional problems is different from SEN students because for the latter is related to a dis, uh, an illness. For those with emotional problems, is more to do with their families or uh, their personality. Thank you. I would like to ask uh, the first part. In the secretary's opening remark, he talked about um, a review of integrated education. I was going to ask about a paragraph 1.11. The, edu the secretary for education said that uh, the review for integrated education has started and there will be improvement measures put in place to provide quality education, uh, quality integrated education to, um, to, to, to help students develop their potential to the full. I see now there is A, B and C. In March this year, when it was uh, presented to the education panel, uh, has there been some papers? Yes, it's in front of you. It's Info 14. Sorry, let me try to find it. Yes, I can see it. It's a meeting on the 2nd of March. It's paper CB bracket for 643 stroke 17 to 18 bracket 03. It's info 14 in our bundle. Thank you. I would like to ask about the second part. It's about identification and intake. It's paragraph 2.3. In relation, uh, in relation to the early identification and intervention program. So it's part two, paragraph 2.3, identification of uh, SEN students. It's in relation to primary students. I'll defer to my colleague, Mr. Lai. At primary one, we have an early identification and intervention program for primary one students with Learning disability at uh, learning difficulties is an EII program. When children go to primary one, they have already been assessed by the children's um, assessment center. Information of identified cases of SEN students uh, will be forwarded to the primary school. So schools already know that um, they are SEN students. There may be parents who have not sent their children to the Children Assessment Centre. Between September and December, class masters of primary one classes will make use of a questionnaire after observing the uh, students for a few months to identify potential SEN students. It's a checklist with performance covering Chinese, mathematics, English and behavior. The school will then conduct a conference with the school-based psychologist to screen
screen out students with di learning difficulties. Support is immediately provided to identified students. Subject to how students react, we see if further assessment is required. For those with a um, bigger problem, assessment will be immediately con conducted by uh, school-based psychology, uh, psych psychologists, that is, in the second half of, the, of primary one. For some others, those with um, obvious learning difficulties, assessments will be done in the first half of a primary two. Most of them are underachievers or they um, have learning difficulties. That is, in re that, is um, that is the EII program. The questionnaire. Is it the observation checklist for teachers? Do we have the information? If not, can we get the information? Yes, it will be provided to you. Well, if we have this checklist, we will know about the scope of um, what is covered. Pre-primary. Well, it's there isn't much detail. Under paragraph 2.15a, we see some information. Sorry, I have jumped a bit. It's 2.15a. In view of the regularization of the pilot scheme on on-site preschool rehabilitation services by the Social Welfare Department, the Education Bureau and the Social Welfare Department have agreed on a mechanism to ensure preschool children with special needs under the on-site preschool rehabilitation services, all the social, social welfare departments, other subvented rehabilitation services will be given appropriate support when they proceed to primary schooling. Well, I, I heard you mention about um, Children's Assessment Center. Uh, who is responsible for this center? It's under the Department of Health and the uh, hospital authority. So, how do you coordinate um, between that and the pilot scheme on on site preschool rehabilitation services? For preschool children, They will be assessed under the Ch um, Children Assessment Center. There will be indication uh, in September before they proceed to primary one um, that uh, they are students with special educational needs. Assessment information will be made available to the Education Bureau after um, the primary place allocation. The Bureau will forward the information to the school. In recent years, the SWD has launched the um, on-site preschool rehabilitation services. Some students are already receiving rehabilitation services provided by the department before they go to primary schools. Services are provided to enable the, stu the uh, children to proceed to primary school to help them adjust. This is useful information. So we wonder, uh, we, we're looking into whether we can obtain the information of students under the on-site preschool rehabilitation services. We have already agreed on an approach. The FWD will make coordination under the service under 
from centres offering the service. The information will be forwarded to the Education Bureau and the information will then be given to schools before the academic year starts. Apart from that, there will be progress indicators on um, learning adjustment as well as emotion. So this, in this way, schools will be able to uh, provide more targeted services to students. For a few weeks after the academic year has started, we will enhance our services to monitor the situation of uh, these students in a school setting. The two pieces of information, especially um, those the, the one related to progress under the preschool rehabilitation services, when will they be uh, they be formally obtained? We have already worked out the workflow. We are now working on the detailed design of the form. We want to strike a balance so that we don't get uh, excessive information because this will put pressure on the um, preschool rehabilitation services. How and too little information will not be of much help to schools. Well, I understand that um, some information is not given to schools because parents don't give consent. So information under the assessment and under the reputation services, do they need consent of parents before the information is forwarded to schools? We, all, we will need consent from parents concerning all information because of privacy issues. So whether it is a kindergarten, primary school, secondary school and tertiary education institutions. If personal information is forwarded to another institution, we will need the consent of parents. Sorry, I jump again. In Table 4, that is um, page 17, Paragraph 2.10 for 2013-14 year to 2017-18. The number of uh, cases where parents declined to give consent for transferring information from primary six with SEN to secondary schools, the percentage has dropped. Do you have the percentage for pre-primary two? primary. If you don't have the information off the top of your head, doesn't matter. Give it to me afterwards. What have you done at the two stages to encourage parents to give the consent? When a student is transferred from one school to another, will the information be forwarded? Under the current mechanism, children under six well uh, when it comes to special needs, it will be under the purview of the social welfare department. The information is held by the um, ch children assessment center. If in, sometimes information is available from service providers that can be forwarded to primary schools, but we will rely on parents to tell us to tell us that their children are special need children, and then we will approach relevant in organizations to obtain the information. We can't just go to the social welfare department to get the information for schools. The on-site uh, rehabilitation services program covers all kindergartens. In the past, children are taken to service providers under SWD, but that is no longer the case. So we have worked out with the social welfare department a new mechanism in relation to transfer of information. 
will ask parents uh, whether information can be transferred. So it will be more, we will take a more active role. Primary and secondary schools are both under the education department. In the past, uh, we would ask parents to whether information can be transferred to secondary school. We have uh, more complete information, say for example, how many SCN students in primary school that will go to secondary school. However, when it comes to kindergarten, we may not have complete information. We'll see what more we can do. In 2018-19, when we launched the um, transfer mechanism, I do believe that we will have um, more complete information. I have one more question. Well, what about uh, when a student is uh, transferred halfway through primary school? Can the mechanism be extended uh, to these cases? In that case, we will also encourage parents to agree to the transfer of information. So consent will have to be obtained every single time, or it's a blanket consent. Shall we hear from Mr. Lai? I will defer to the P PS. We will obtain consent from parents when students go from primary school to secondary school. And that uh, covers um, the uh, from kindergarten to primary school. It covers the entire period of primary school. So even when a student is halfway through um, primary school and, the, and when the student is transferred, uh, we don't need to obtain another consent. However, principals usually will specifically ask parents again. Well, there is this opt-out mechanism. Have you considered implementing this uh, opt-out approach? Under the opt-out uh, approach, if a student is uh, identified um, as SEN students, Unless you give a specific um, refusal, that means you agree that the information will be transferred to another school when the, when the student goes to a different primary school or, uh, pro or when the student proceeds to, the secondary, to a secondary school. It is now opt-in and you now ask uh, if uh, parents will give you consent un unless uh, they say otherwise. We may take this approach, but the rationale behind will be different. Whether it is opt-in or opt-out, you will have to explain sufficiently to parents. Say, for example, well, information will be automatically transferred unless you opt-out. There is very little difference because explanation will have to be given to parents. That is, uh, what, what is the impact of the transfer and what services will you obtain? So with uh, sufficient explanation, whether there is an opt-in or an opt-out approach, there is little difference. It may not be good if um, the parent doesn't have a chance uh, to be explained the situation or given a chance to opt in or opt out. Of course, uh, you can always ask to meet parents. Well, when you're, when you're told that uh, they would like to meet your parents, um, children usually will be very scared like I did. I would also like to uh, ask about another area. Well, you said that uh, between the September and December is the identification questionnaires will have to be filled. Uh, if it's identified as a serious case, a uh, case will be immediately forwarded to um, school psychologist. Otherwise, the case will be dealt with in the first term of primary two. 
in note five. Can you explain to to me? It seems that there is a streaming uh, amongst uh, school psychology education psychologists. Some of the cases will be dealt with them, whereas others will be referred to other cases. Say, for example, uh, child psych psychiatrists. So for the um, for the principle of intervention before assessment, can you give us further information? That's in relation to 2.13. I would defer to my colleague about, uh, well, um, what is the um, triage when it comes to different specialties, say, for example, child psychiatrists. About the intervention before assessment, well, when we have conducted preliminary assessment, even when it's not fully identified as a case of um, one with learning difficulties, we can still provide intervention. When we suspect there's a problem, we provide support first so that there wouldn't be a period of time when because of the lack of assessment, uh, the child doesn't receive help. Uh, so Dr. Lau, please tell us about the work of psychologists. Now for EPs, we have different approaches for children who have learning difficulties or who have uh, difficulty adapting or have medical problem. Uh, we provide different approaches. Now, uh, in terms of training, uh, we provide uh, some professional assessment for uh, those with uh, uh, psychological problems. So there's referral to the EPs who would then diagnose whether there is uh, reading and speech impairment or uh, intellectual disability. Now, for those with behavioral problems such as autism or ADHD, then that would be more of a medical problem. So for the educational psychologists, uh, we identify that, including whether there are learning difficulties. When it comes to diagnosis, we leave that to the psychiatrist. So after we conduct a basic assessment, if we suspect that there are symptoms of uh, uh, psychiatric problems, we will refer them to the psychiatrist for diagnosis. I see. Uh, uh, I now understand about this triage matter. Now, uh, also, we come to paragraph 2.5 because uh, we see that uh, there are some arrangements when there's graduation from primary one to primary two. But how about uh, after two, uh, primary two? Now, according to uh, 2.15, uh, now 31.8% uh, uh, were diagnosed at that stage, and 70% uh, is after primary two. So I don't know how, how the government gives support. Now, when the teacher detects that, uh, how long does it have to be before the assessment, uh, before there is help by the EP? Now, we think that early identification is a problem. Now, when the teacher sees there's something unusual, uh, what arrangement would be provided? Would there be a long wait? Now, in paragraph 2.15, it says about 70% were diagnosed at the primary one to primary two stage, and the other 70% is in other stages. <clears throat> now, very often this is a development problem. Maybe the symptoms don't appear early at primary one, primary two. Now, when the learning becomes difficult, 
uh, the concepts to be learned are more difficult. No. Uh, then uh, there is uh, uh, a greater uh, surfacing problem, and uh, and uh, very often there may be children from abroad, and uh, uh, so that is uh, also reflected in the figures. Now, uh, after primary two, uh, how do we help? to do identification, I think it's about the same as in primary one to primary two. Now, uh, it's uh, by the teacher uh, detecting some learning difficulty and suspecting that there is SEN and then the EP is approached. Uh, perhaps Mr. Lai can inform us about the other situations. Now, in figures, we see that in uh, senior primary school, some of the students have difficulty in adapting, uh, so there are behavioral problems, so there's need for assessment at these higher grades, and some with uh, speech and reading impairment now, we look at the background. Sometimes they are new arrivals, so we see, try to see whether there is a cultural problem or whether it's a uh, speech and reading impairment. Now, sometimes it takes two or three years to be clear. So, uh, And then when it's in secondary school, now some parents do not want the children to receive assessment at lower grades. And then at secondary school, the parents uh, realized that there needs to be a uh, comprehensive, more comprehensive assessment. So very often, uh, the first assessment, uh, uh, first time assessment takes place at higher grades. Now, I'm asking, how do you provide the service? Now, in primary one, prim primary two, the Procedure is very simple, and then after that, uh, is it still the same uh, part of the same process, or is it uh, a second uh, line of service? Now, Mr. Lai, when the school finds a problem with the child, then. Uh, support has to be provided, not just in class, sometimes in small groups also. If there's going to be a referral to the EP for assessment, now, right now, 80% or even a bit more uh, of the students would be able to see the EPs within two months. Sometimes it takes longer because it takes longer to meet with the parents. Uh, sometimes the parents uh, postpone the meeting, so uh, uh, it's not always uh, up to us, Kenneth, and then Lam Chuck Ting. Thank you, Chairman. Now I have to go to the first part. I like to ask about some basic matters. I'm sorry. Now I like to look at. Table 2, uh, this uh, is about the main categories of SENs. Uh, now in 2012 to 2017, uh, over those five school years. Now you see the rates of increase. Now mainly they are in attention deficit or uh, high, uh, HDHD, that's 97%, and uh, autism, ASD, 88% uh, increase. Now, I don't know why there are these large increase, increases. I'd like to ask the experts, is it because you have improved in your efficiency uh, in identification or is it because the social environment has changed in the five-year period so that 
more of these symptoms have appeared, or maybe there are biological factors or, or psychological factors. So now for ADHD in particular, why is it there is such a, such a sharp increase? Now, apart from value for money issue, now I don't want society to uh, be uh, to to see more and more of these uh, children with psychological and behavioral problems. So I'd like to hear an explanation. I will ask the experts to see whether someone has done a study over this period to see whether there are social or other factors for this increase. Now, it appears that uh, there are more receiving this assessment service in our system, and there is also more acceptance or uh, cognition of these problems in society. Now, people used to think that this is just a ch case of children being naughty, but now uh, there are more assessments. So the pro services provided by schools and society uh, have increased. Now, so the parents don't mind uh, this matter being uh, coming into the open, so they would be glad to take the children to assessment. But Mr. Lai, are you aware of uh, studies uh, for on the social factors? Uh, the secretary mentioned already that there has been a, an improvement in school culture so that parents and teachers are more aware of these SGNs. And for the two categories of students mentioned, uh, there is cap diagnosis uh, capability within our uh, healthcare sector. So in the past couple of years, the assessment has uh, been more speedy. So there are more cases referred to the school system. So there are more resources provided. Uh, previously, there is no uh, such. Uh, there is not such a high level of awareness. Now, I'm not a specialist, so I'm not an expert. So I must uh, give credit to the work done, uh, having changed the school culture. Now, I like to come to part two. Now, Tanya Chen asked about identification, but I like to ask only about the lift, because I think this is more self-contained issue. I'll leave other members to ask questions about other parts. Now, barrier-free access is, of course, an ultimate objective of school campuses. Now, as at 2018, in May, for the secondary and primary schools in Hong Kong, do you know how many have lifts? How many don't even have one? Do you have such statistics? Uh, the permanent secretary, perhaps, perhaps, I'll tell you how many don't. Now, uh, for the major re uh, renovation works we do for schools, we allow them to apply for lifts. Now, uh, 68 have applied under this mechanism. That is, right now, uh, or until now, they don't have any. So, out of that, and also we think that about 30 haven't applied. So, in this year's budget, 
we have allotted funding for schools without lifts, for lifts to be installed. And on the 1st of March, we wrote to these schools to confirm whether they do not have lifts and wish to have lifts installed. And we are now receiving and uh, processing their replies. Now, some have already applied, uh, and they are part of the 68. Now, so we estimate that there are 68 plus 30. Now, before the $2 billion uh, funding is announced in the budget, now your lift uh, installment cost, installation costs. Now, uh, where is that information? In our major renovation works, that is under school renovation. What is the average figure of uh, large-scale renovation expenses annually? I will supply the information after the meeting. I seem to recall it's over $1 billion. Now, talking about lifts, 68 uh, already have, have already applied. Now, I'm rather disappointed looking at Table 5. Now, uh, you look at the analysis by the audit commissioner. Now, 44 percent, or 30 in 30 cases, applications have already been made for eight, nine, or ten years. These are uh, cases uh, accumulated over a long time. Is it that there isn't enough funding or there is a problem in the application procedure so that the, these 30 cases have been uh, unresolved for over seven or eight years? Now, in the past, the application for lifts uh, is, of course, done by the school. And we assess the uh, urgency, and now we conduct renovation for many schools. Uh, very often the teaching facilities and the school halls have to be renovated. Now, uh, we approved about five applications over the past uh, five years, uh, five applications for lifts. Now, lift uh, installation is very complex. When there is no lift and you want to put in a new one, now for technical feasibility and for the availability of space, uh, now all these have to be considered. Now in housing estates, will that be included in the usable space of the housing estate uh, now, and uh, what is the location that is available. So for these reasons, uh, it's quite a slow process. So that's why in this year's budget, we earmarked a sum for lifts, and we uh, sought out some consultant companies to work on this. We hope that in the next 10 years or more we can install lifts for schools which wish to have them. Now, you said that uh, urgency is an issue. Now, does that depend on whether the schools uh, already have uh, stu children with uh, physical impairment or disabilities so that you give approval more quickly in those cases or are there other reasons? Now, uh, now uh, the urgency uh, is relative. Now, if there are two works uh, for lifts, one is or uh, there are several children who need lifts, and of course uh, 
uh, those with these uh, children would get more urgency or priority. Now, sometimes the uh, there's a nexus, uh, an urgent need to uh, repair the uh, pipes for the toilet and so on. That might be more urgent. Uh, so that's what I mean by urgency. It's not just the urgency of the lifts, but uh, relative to the other types of works. So, urgency, according to the Secretary, might have to do with uh, availability of funds. You approve uh, five projects uh, on average every year. Is it that uh, you have got only limited funds? Or because uh, we here will be looking at uh, resources and funds. Now you have $2 billion, but there are 68 plus 30 cases to handle. Do you think $2 billion can en enable you to uh, smoothly uh, implement the uh, lift projects? Chairman, $2 billion is, uh, I believe, sufficient. Is money a real problem to government, to all government departments? Money is always a problem. With more money, you can certainly do more. But when we assess the projects, every year we will be giving, we will be given uh, a fund, a sum of money, and uh, we have to just spend within the uh, a lot of funds. And we also have to look at uh, manpower. School projects are complicated in this regard. For major projects, uh, they can only start. Uh, they can only be completed within holidays, such as the Christmas holiday, the summer holiday. So how many workers can we get uh, to finish the project within such a short duration? That's uh, another problem. I won't say that uh, we are prevented from doing this because of money, but uh, there are different factors that uh, would affect the speed with which we carry out the projects. Of course, I will be happy if we are given more money. Secretary, you said that before the uh, fund was given in 2008, on average you pursued uh, five lift projects each year. Did you monitor the progress of these projects? Did they finish the job in one year or two years? Have you got any uh, statistics on the number of uh, lead projects completed every year? And uh, if there have been there, there were delays, uh, did you find out why, Secretary? On average, generally speaking, uh, the project is completed within five years. But uh, things are more complicated. Uh, than that. When you go to a school to carry out a project, we have to, uh, sh we have to do it um, outside uh, the school term. And then if uh, you want to take something up, there are te real technical issues to handle. In some cases, you may discover that the, uh, uh, the the maximum growth for for area has already been built, and no more can be provided. And the school is so big, and if I want to build something, I may encroach on uh, other sites. I may need to get consent, and then uh, there's the question of after occupying the additional. Uh, land would uh, we have to surrender the the, the land uh, when the housing estate is to be redeveloped? So on average, five years 
from the time of approval granted to completion. We have. Oh, you can put this question to him, Kenneth. One hundred and ten, and only applications. Forty-two have been approved, and you you approve only five. Uh, on average, a year. What, why? Why is just forty-two? Uh, any? Is it a question of uh, your resources? Forty-two out of one hundred and ten uh, have been approved. What are the problems with the others? Or is not that they are rejected? Uh, we are processing those applications. You said uh, average time is five years. And every you approve five every year. How how many uh, are approved every year? Uh, on average, five. Uh, if we approve more, then uh, other school projects cannot be carried out. This time we have uh, earmark. We have been uh, getting a, a dedicated fund to to ask a consultancy firm to complete uh, all these projects for the, those schools in 10 years. Uh, previously, you approved five projects every year. Did any of them uh, fail to materialize uh, after all because of technical issues? When would the schools, uh, inf when would the schools uh, inform you that uh, it, the project could not be done? Well, sometimes uh, you can offer help, not through the installation of lifts. I don't know the the, the kind of system, how it's called. There, you know, there's a move a chair, movable the chair to, for people using the, uh, the staircase. I don't know how how old, um, fall off or how intensive the uh, project mo monitoring is conducted. But if uh, after a few years uh, they 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 could not finish it, well, it's not that we uh, give them the go ahead and uh, go away. We we'll monitor the project if uh, there are problems. If uh, there's a problem with the design, for example, before commencement of work, we would uh, work with the uh, contractor and the school. And if uh, necessary, we also involve other departments. Sometimes the design might have to be modified, or sometimes uh, we have to go f for another location. We are already. Providing the uh, the wheelchair uh, transportation uh, system to schools with uh, development of technology. In the future, there will be um, other alternatives. There will be more choices, but the, in most cases, uh, lips. Uh, uh, can uh, serve the needs. Do, have you encountered uh, cases, uh, abortive cases, that after changing the design and other things, uh, the, the project simply could not be completed? Well, we won't give up so easily. If this location is not all right, we'll try to find another one. We would uh, talk to them, do the design again, and if uh, that's still not uh, Feasible, we would uh, find other uh, ways to get it done. I will check the records after the meeting if uh, we have got any uh, experience with abortive cases. Uh, and there are schools uh, which submitted their application many years ago, but uh, they are not getting any uh, replies, any definitive reply. As to whether it's uh, it's going to be approved after waiting for years, since 2012 we have uh, approved uh, 46 cases. 
most were approved uh, in the year of uh, application submission or the year following the submission. Some are technically more complicated. We have we have told the schools that uh, they don't need to do this every year. If they submit uh, an application this year and not it's not approved this year, we'll consider the the application again next year. Chairman, in the directors of of all this uh, report, two paragraph two point two six uh, nine six, the EDB. Emphasizes that the installation program can be completed in around eight years' time, uh, by financial year 2026 to 2027. Right by uh, completion, I don't know whether it's uh, completing the scrutiny of or the vetting of the application or the uh, entire program. What what kind of uh, time frame is this? We we mean uh, the completion. Of uh, the projects, we will see the lips uh, operational by that time. But if uh, technically one or two uh, uh, fail to be computed, then we'll take another look at the progress. You mean to the forty-two, or we uh, we mean all the schools? We are the, doing a survey. To find out how many schools uh, need this, and then we would uh, seek the advice of the consultancy firm on uh, the ways uh, to go about it, and then we will try to meet uh, this completion deadline. When will the study, uh, the uh, the survey, be completed? As the permanent secretary has told you, we have asked the schools uh, about this. Some schools already have uh, lips, and they are now applying for more. And for some schools, uh, they have haven't got any, and uh, they have not submitted any application either. We're, we're trying to find out why, and also we're trying to find out whether there are suitable locations. When will this uh, part of the program be completed? One or two years? The whole program will be completed in twenty twenty six twenty seven. All right, completion. Yes, that's the target. Completion by 2026-27. For schools which have been uh, waiting uh, for a, a, a reply for years, do they have a special task force? Can you ask you questions about their applications, about the progress? Are you in a position to tell the schools whether something is lacking or what uh, what more will be required uh, and uh, the sort of processing timetable? Well, Chairman, if we are talking about the old system, if the school uh, wants to know about the progress, uh, they can contact our uh, uh, colleagues in the districts, and our colleagues will certainly be able to tell them the information needed. But for the new program, uh, we are going to cover all schools which need this. Something would certainly happen within one or two years, and we will inform them. Uh, if it's eight years, all the incumbent students will have left. Y yes, that's the, that's the problem we face in the education system. Uh, in other areas, uh, but w w what we can do is to uh, do our level best. I don't know who will follow up this in 2026. I believe I will, uh, but perhaps I should uh, pause here, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Lam Chuck Teng, Chairman, I would like to first of all ask some questions about. Uh, a particular category, student with mental illness. I want to refer to paragraph 1.4 of the audit report. Uh, it's the D I D one on uh, effective from twenty seven. 
18, 18, the EDB has included mental illness as a type of SEM. There are different types of MI, including anxiety disorders, depression disorders, and obsessive compulsive disorders. There are more, also more severe MI, such as psychotic disorders and bipolar disorders, the symptoms of which are usually more persistent and the inference are more Usually more pervasive, students with MI need treatment by healthcare professionals. They are usually diagnosed by psychiatrists and followed by clinical psychologists, psychiatric nurses, and or medical social workers. Schools play a complementary role in coping with the advice on treatment and rehabilitation given by the healthcare professionals and assist the students adapt to school life according to their needs. So, Secretary for Education, do you agree that a student with a MI when it comes to their life in school, it's important to their rehabilitation because they spend many hours in school, in the school. Secretary. I don't know, but I think, of course, it's important. Whether you're the student has mental illness or not, school life is uh, important to uh, to the uh, nurturing of a child. Uh, the secretary will soon know what I am trying to ask. In 27, effective from 2017-18, MI has been included as a type of SEN. Did you ever list MI into uh, the categories uh, of a special education. Uh, we did not look. We do not look at this uh, from this perspective. Uh, why did we uh, list student VMI as a type of SEN in 2017, 18? We are th really talking about the provision of support. When a student with uh, MI uh, has been uh, discharged and has returned to schools, uh, to the school, uh, he will need more uh, care and support, and uh, the student may be uh, emotionally unstable and may need more care and attention. So the inclusion of MI in 2017-18 uh, was done from the. Uh, angle of providing more support to the school so that the student can be helped. We are not talking from an academic perspective whether a student with MI is a, is a type of a student with special educational needs. I thank the Secretary uh, for, for education, for sharing his uh, thoughts, but I'm not asking for his personal opinion. I'm asking a factual question. Did the government uh, list, ever list students with uh, mental illness as those requiring uh, special education? I defer to Mr. Lai. In the past, students with MI we need support uh, in uh, co coping with uh, uh, emotional and uh, mental conditions. So the school counseling network, the school counselors, uh, the guidance teachers will be those uh, sub providing the support. We have the learning support grant to s given to the schools to support uh, this group of uh, students with uh, SEN. But uh, at that time, uh, the, their, their needs are not covered by the uh, learning support grant system. So we'd like to give them additional resources. So that uh, learning the uh, students and teachers and other people would uh, work together to help uh, these students. And uh, in 2017-18, uh, we uh, formally uh, include the uh, MI as a type of SCN, so that we can provide more uh, resources in terms of uh, the learning support grant, so that uh, we can help. Uh, these students, uh, and also to, um, in accordance with the advice on treatment and rehab uh, provided by healthcare workers. I was told that uh, since 2003, when the new subvention model was adopted, 
free categories of SEN has been taken away. That is um, gifted children, uh, children suffering from mental illness, as well as um, children uh, with emotional problems. Is that true? No. Starting from 2003 and four, we have um, added the learning support grant for primary students covering the eight SEN types. Previously, there was no um, learning support grant. As I have said, that uh, when it comes to behavioral problems or emotional problems, it is not an illness. It's more to do with one's uh, family. So we will ask uh, social workers to help the uh, children. For gifted children, there is a separate unit under the Bureau to help these students tap into their potential. For 2017-18, mental illness is included as one of the types of SEN. Is it because that um, at that time there was uh, recommendations made by the committee to prevent uh, student suicide? Recommendations were made uh, to strengthen support, psychological support to students. That's why you have included mental illness under SEN. Prevention of student suicide was one of our main area of work at that time. And we were, we have, we were implementing a number of uh, measures at that time. This type includes um, Patients with mental illness, we do think that more resources should be made available for teachers to take care of them. I won't equate it to um, prevention of suicide. We want to help them adjust better at school so that they will learn better. I would like to follow up on what was said previously. Student with mental illness, when they were included into uh, an SEN type, Mr. Lai said that uh, the learning support grant started in 2007. Mental illness was not included until 2017 18. In 1983, there was a for primary school an intensive uh, remedial teaching program. Under the program, there are 11 categories, including students suffering from mental illness or uh, behavioral or um, emotional problems. From 1983 to 2002, mental illness was included under the Intensive Remedial Teaching Program. Is it the case that after 2002, the uh, Intensive Remedial Teaching Program was no longer in place? Let me explain. That starting from the 1980s, uh, it was called a different name. Under the program, students uh, who are low achievers um, would obtain pro services. At that time, there weren't so many names um, under SEN. Usually, they were just uh, with um, poor academic performance, uh, poor interpersonal relations, or uh, learning difficulties. The focus at that time was uh, to provide them with extra support with uh, certain subjects, say for example Chinese or English. Starting from 2003, we implemented the Learning Support Grant. The Intensive Remedial Teaching Program continued. And under the program, low achievers were included. These uh, low achievers might suffer from other problems related to uh, their families. That's why they are low achievers.
when we classify the various types, we focus mainly on the learning difficulties. Mr. Lai said that after 2003, there was still the remedial program for some. That means for others, it's not there. I don't care where you come from. The remedial teaching program is to provide more resources to schools to increase number of teachers and subsidies. That means to give more resources to students with special needs. My question is, how come in 2002, well, from 1983 to 2002, for about 20 years, children with mental illness were given extra resources. However, after 2003 till 2017-18, it's taken away. The remedial teaching program, or uh, whatever it's called before that, aim at uh, helping students to improve their their academic performance. It, m it might include students with emotional or behavioral problems, but the f but the criteria is academic performance. If you are if you have low academic performance, you'll be given um, extra resources. There, are, there might be students. There might be students um, th who are not low achievers, but they suffer um, other problems. And there is another program to help them. In, t in 2017-18, um, we cover both groups. In recent years, student suicide has drawn a lot of attention. There may be different reasons uh, causing suicide, but uh, some of them uh, are plagued by emotional problems and some others may be suffering from mental illness. I am very concerned about uh, extra needs and support for students suffering from problems. You said that the intensive remedial teaching program focuses on academic performance. The school is not just about academic performance. You also need to take care of um, the different needs, say for example, their emotional needs. They don't just ask for straight A's. I don't think the purpose of this program is just to help the students catch up academically just to, uh, to the level of other students. Secretary. In 1980s, when we put in place the remedial teaching program, as Mr. Lai said, that uh, it would be more to help with um, academic performance. Well, the program may not meet today's uh, needs because nowadays we talk about whole person development. But when the program was launched, that was the purpose. Low achievers may be low achievers because of various problems, say family problems, uh, emotional problems, intellectual problems, or uh, learning difficulties. That, that was an old program. In 2013, we focused more on special educational needs of students. That's why we have a new uh, grant to achieve that purpose. At the same time, schools may retain the remedial teaching program. Schools may take into account their needs uh, before deciding what suits them most. We implemented an additional service in 2017-18 in view of an increasing number of um, 
students suffering from mental illness or recovering from mental illness, we would like to give them support to better adjust. In relation to uh, providing mental uh, psychological support, there is a, a comprehensive uh, support service available at schools. In the past decade, uh, more focus is uh, put on other areas as well. Well, I will uh, defer to Mrs. Wong. We have jumped to paragraph three, but it doesn't matter. Support for students' uh, mental development is something that we have started since 1980s. There is um, the counseling um, system. We have a different ones, some more known than others. They aim to enhancing resilience amongst the students. We have the remedial teaching program, and we have the comprehensive uh, support program. We, at the same time, enhance. Uh, our services. In 2017-18, um, the learning support grant will cover mental health. We realize that uh, alertness amongst the teachers is also very important, so we enhance training. In 2016-17, 17-18, we enhance training so that um, we we will enhance uh, teachers' preparedness. We realize the importance of uh, gatekeepers when it comes to psychological health or mental health. You can't just look at the learning support grant. There is also the counseling service and also enhanced training for teachers. I understand that uh, this is the administration doesn't just rely on learning support grant. There will be other things, say, for example, enhanced training for teachers, but I find it difficult to understand because under the remedial teaching programs, it covers 11 groups, uh, types of students, including me those with mental illness. However, un in 2003, under the learning support ground, this, this group of students are ex were excluded and they do need extra support. There may be different ways uh, to enhance your services, say, for example, enhanced training. But if you don't give schools additional resources, then they don't have sufficient resources to help students. Does it mean that uh, there will be reduced resources or inadequate resources to be given to students? Why did you not include mental illness until 2017-18? If there is no need, then you don't have to include it. You did not have to include it in 2017-18. If there is a need, why wait till 2017-18? Is it the case that uh, the problem was not serious enough before that? Do you agree that mental illness is one of the types of SEN? 
prior to 2000. Well, I don't remember the exact date. We had made some changes to the uh, comprehensive uh, council service or support service. Say, for example, how to um, improve our support. As my colleague have said, this is uh, about the entire school uh, support service as well as uh, integrated education. It's not just looking at one particular program. At that time when learning support grant was implemented, we had considered whether um, support service for the entire school was enough or not. We have been trying to improve um, the provision of resources as to whether students uh, with mental illness is categorized as um, students with special educational needs. I will defer to Mr. Lai later, but um, well, they are not exactly SEN because we're talking about um, long term problems, say visual impairment, hearing impairment, um, and it's related to some a, a child's development, say, for example those suffering from ADHD. Mental illness is an illness that can be treated. In some places, mental illness is not a type of SEN. We included in 2017-18 from the perspective of service provision. When a child goes back to school, like uh, autism, those autistic children or ADHD uh, students, is about helping them adjust and integrate. For other uh, types, uh, we're talking about um, the the, um, the difficulty being there all the time. Say, f say for example, um, intellectual disability. When it comes to mental illness, it may be um, not as long term. Say, one can recover after one year. When the student recovers, then such services will no longer be needed. So the nature is different. We would like to help students better. That's why we have included them. I would like to get some um, clarification. The secretary said that uh, mental illness is short term. That is more or less what he said. Has there been some professional scientific studies and, uh, uh, and and a conclusion drawn? Well, just like other illnesses, it can be long term or short term. Exactly, you can't keep emphasizing that it is short term. Hearing impairment, speech impairment can be treated. Say, for example, after surgery. Then why would you include them? I think, as the secretary said, that it is from the perspective of resources allocation. Yes. May I be allowed to read out the uh, learning support grant and the um, remedial teaching program and the difference for the Remedial teaching. First is a learning difficulty, special learning difficulty, LS. Um, learning support ground first, learning difficulty, bracket, dyslexia, 
for the intensive program, ADHD for the uh, learning support ground, there is a similar one. For intensive one, there is aut autism and also um, speech difficult uh, speech impairment, intellectual disability. There is a similar program under uh, the learning support ground, hearing impairment, also a similar counterpart in the other one. There is also a special physical need, a similar program under the learning support ground. Visual impairment and a similar one under the learning support grant. That for the remedial one, gifted, uh, emotional difficulty, mental illness, they are no longer there under the learning support grant. So I don't agree with the secretary. Um, let's speak from common sense. We're not experts. If you're suffering from mental illness, it may greatly affect your learning um, ability. As the audit report said, students with special needs should get help uh, to adjust to school life. Now, the secretary in his reply, he admitted that the schools in supporting the mentally ill students plays an important role. Now, the students face mental disturbance. Now, isn't this SEN? If not, you wouldn't have put it in, put it back in, in 2017 to 18. Now, prior to 2002, starting in 20, 1983, now, the mental illness was classified as SEN. So I think this is self-contradictory. Now I'd like the administration to supply the student suicide figures every year from 1983, uh, or rather from 2003 to 2017 to 18, when mental illness was not classified as SGN, was the student suicide rate higher or lower? If we use this figure as determinant, this may be oversimplifying. There are many factors every year for student suicides. Now, if I think if we try to determine whether uh, IRTP switching to uh, LSG, uh, whether that's a contributing factor, I think that's uh, not the right way to approach it. Chairman, we have looked at the figures. We have heard your explanation. We can draw our conclusions. This is a matter of public concern. If the figures do not reveal the relevant uh, issue, uh, we can seek an answer elsewhere. The member seems to be asking, well, after the IRTP uh, doesn't include uh, mental illness, whether the suicide cases have increased. Perhaps uh, I will respond because I think Mr. Lam uh, is oversimplifying in his comments. Now, as I said earlier, uh, we don't just have the intensified uh, teaching program. Uh, uh, now, I don't know whether the uh, absence of uh, IRTP was the cause. Now, we do have a comprehensive uh, program to help 
mentally ill patients. I agree we must take care of all patients, including uh, students with mental illness or uh, behavioral problem or emotional problems. Now, we added it back in, in 1917 to 18. It doesn't mean that we were wrong before. It's just because we want to do things better to help the children more. Now, we understand that you did it for a proper reason when you added it back in 1970 to 2017 to 18. Mr. Lam is asking whether there are uh, 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 a approaches. Now, it's uh, not a bad idea. Now, it's for the welfare of the s students. Now, uh, I have to see whether we have these figures available. Just uh, maybe try your best to supply the figures, certainly. Now, the Secretary said that in 2017-18, Mental illness is uh, in, once again included among SGNs because the students need more care. Now, that's the fact, right? If they don't require such care, they wouldn't need to add it back in in 2070 to 18. Now, it's a good thing to add it back in. So why is it that they haven't added it in in the decade or more before that. Now, why it happened now, I think it's rather difficult for the Secretary to give a proper explanation. Now, I'm very unhappy that the Secretary kept saying that we were oversimplifying. We were asking about the past. The figures are not conclusive but they can provide a basis for our perspective. I hope that the Secretary, when he comes to this public hearing, he should be more careful in his wording. The Secretary can have his views and we can have our own. We also need to look at the figures. Uh, we can also write up our uh, assessment carefully. Now, I'm just criticizing the Secretary. If he's saying that mental illness is a short-term phenomenon, now everything can be possible. Uh, perhaps the Secretary can try to supply the figures. Now, in 2017-18, uh, we want to put in more resources. Now, it's a good thing that you put it back in in 2017-18. Mr. Lam wants to understand why it wasn't there before uh, and uh, why, uh, what impact did it have. Now, we need not uh, try to uh, determine whether, whether there's something wrong there. We just want to be forward-looking. So we have a 10-minute break. Uh, we'll let uh, Paul ask his questions first as he has to attend other meetings. May I take up 10 minutes? Thank you. I have to go to other meetings. Now, at different ages in our society, there are different needs and there are different levels of care for children. Now, I think as members, we should try to get answers if we want to put certain conclusions to the other side. Uh, the other side can agree or disagree. Now, uh, now, and uh, I think uh, we shouldn't just uh, say that 
uh, uh, put take the other to task because he dis disagrees with our conclusions. Now there are different special education needs. Some are psychological, some are psychiatric. Now I ask some about psychiatric problems. Others are physical. So uh, there are different situations. And so the assessments are different. Now, just now, Kenneth learned about lift. He asked about lifts. Now, those who have physical disability, who have mobility difficulty, now there seems to be a 21% drop. That's in uh, Table 2. Now, if we focus a lot on the lifts issue, maybe we are a bit out of focus. Now, we want to build more lifts uh, quickly, but maybe the trend is that there, is, there has been a decline in the number of physically disabled students. Now, has the administration considered that factor? And now, it's not only should students uh, be provided with lifts, uh, perhaps physically disabled students can be grouped together in certain locations so that there can be a better provision of facilities. We have noticed that physically impaired uh, or mobility impaired students have decreased in number, uh, but even if there's one, we try to be fair and provide the facility. Sometimes it's not just the uh, 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 now, now even sometimes, uh, now sometimes even the students or, or the teachers may get hurt and have a mobility problems. So it's better to have a lift. So we don't just look at it from the direction of trend. Now, in some public housing estates, uh, even if it's a thirteen-story building, they don't have lifts. Now. I hope that the uh, housing department thinks you know, the way you think. Uh, it's desirable to have a lift uh, in all buildings. Now that's the ideal, but we have to take a balanced uh, look at the resources. Now uh, there is a matter of priority. Uh, in our housing developments, in schools, and so on. Now, if we want to put lifts in every school with uh, students with SDNs, maybe we should look at cost effectiveness. Maybe we should put those students in certain schools. Uh, otherwise, it's very difficult to catch up with the needs, or it's not a proper balance. Chairman, right now, uh, in certain circumstances, for instance, there is no lift in a school uh, when there is uh, uh, an intake of a student with physical disability. We can see what's done, what can be done. We can ask the teacher. Uh, we can ask the parent whether uh, he would, he or she would consider a school with uh, better facility, uh, but it's up to the parent. They might like a certain school for certain reasons. Now, integrated education is for needy students to join ordinary schools. Uh, that is, you provide access free. Uh, facility. Chairman, you explained very, this very well. It's a matter of integrated education. So 
we try not to uh, do, uh, let students face difficulty attending certain schools because of hard uh, 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 not being un dis unable to attend to certain schools because of hardware problem. The difficulty has to do very often with uh, very often this occurs at schools that have uh, rather aged premises, so they are without certain facilities. Now uh, there also be a financial difficulty, or there would be a matter with the lease uh, causing difficulty for lifts to be installed. Yes, uh, I mentioned these difficulties. Now, very uh, in some cases, the power supply uh, is a problem. Now, the, the electrical installation may not be up to that, uh, and the lease uh, uh, may be a problem because the lifts may have to be built outside the boundary of the schools. So we have to take a balance between the needs and the resources. Now, in the past, we have set barrier-free access as a policy for schools. So in this uh, sphere, we try to do what we can uh, if technology permits. Now, cost effectiveness, I must admit, <coughs> uh, that is one point, but we try to uh, provide uh, the facility needed. Now, uh, very often there may be uh, only a few students or maybe even just one student with the need. Or when we build the facility, the students may have left. Now, if we work it out on cost-effectiveness basis, it's very difficult to uh, conclude that the, the money is worth spending. Now, we talked about the special needs, the nine of them. Now, uh, a lot of it has to do with educational psychology and the report also uh, talked about the time needed for assessment. Now, but uh, a lot of it uh, doesn't have to do with these uh, psychological assessments. Now, perhaps when the issue is not psychiatry, it's not psych psychology, but psychiatry, now, uh, perhaps uh, the meta was already receiving care at government hospital before the meta is referred to you. Now, the child may have been uh, diagnosed of a problem at the mother child health center and uh, the information may be in the government in the public uh, medical health care system uh, so uh, the educational psychologist uh, may not need to make an additional assessment now uh, from the mother child health care center uh, the information may be passed directly to us, uh, so we do not need, may not always need to make a new 
assessment. Uh, but in some cases, the problem was not discovered at an infant stage, uh, like the teaching, uh, like the reading and uh, uh, speech impairment. Uh, if I may supplement uh, to what uh, the secretary has said, for the referral to, of uh, students with visual impairment, there's no need to involve the uh, psychologist. As for the language uh, difficulties, uh, we may they, they may have to be referred to a therapist. And we have uh, support for different uh, schools. For the physical disability, we would have to the, uh, get referral f for the surface of uh, orthopedics. ADHD uh, will be referred to us by the psychiatrist. But uh, there will be also psychological services. Uh, there's a, p a point in the report about early identification of SAN students. The, would you? Uh, is it the really the? Is this uh, an overemphasis of the role of EP? For primary students, uh, uh, the role of EP is uh, more important because they, these are the academic low achievers. But for senior form students uh, with emotional problem, they will be assessed by the professionals. For uh, lower grades, student of lower grades, the EP uh, does play a bigger role. But then we can also involve other professionals. I know nothing about this, but I would like to know that for students with different difficulties, can they improve with the support of parents and with the when they and when they grow older? The secretary has said that some uh, conditions are transient. Can 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 the same be applied to other SAN students? For the autism and uh, ADHD, they may be for life. For for mental illness, uh, it may be transient. Although we may not be able to the, do away to 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 the imp make improvements and do away with the SCN, we will adopt different strategies uh, to help us. Uh, for example, ADHD students to uh, stick to social norm and in social interaction. So it's helpful. So. Uh, Drug treatment plus uh, education support uh, would uh, give the best result. I want to talk about three point two. Is it uh, really good for SAN students? Uh, three point two five. I would reserve further questions to the next part. Well, if they their parents are caring and loving, I think the conditions can be improved. And many problems can be re of uh, SEN students can be uh, alleviated, and uh, I think this report is a uh, well drafted. The student with uh, intellectual disability can be helped uh, so that they can be rehabilitated. Yes, I think. Uh, I have more questions, but I will reserve them for the next part. All right, let's take a ten-minute break.